Yo, what's up? <laughs> Welcome to my PowerPoint showcase again. Uh, well, anyways, uh, this is a great time to start playing this slide or come back to this slide because 3.2.2 update, which is coming in like three days, is going to give you a f shit ton of free stuff. And also because the JP server just launched, so I expect like more uh, new players are going to come in to the, this light and I'm going to be hopefully answering on which ritual miracle to farm which one is the best bang for your buck uh, the too long didn't watch version is Kronos basically speed is king speed is king in this game and that's all you need to know just farm Kronos eat live breathe Kronos you can't go wrong with that uh, the long version is as a free from a free to play standpoint, you don't really have a lot of stamina to uh, farm all three like a actively. It's not really a good idea to spend ten out of ten refresh every single day as a free to play player. In my opinion, ninety percent of your crystals should go towards summoning, and only ten percent of it should go towards like uh, refreshing, right? I think 10% is good enough to reach like end game relics. Uh, any more than that, it's kind of very minuscule upgrades that you're gonna get to your relics. Um, getting more uh, Esper variety is better than minuscule relic upgrades. So I'm gonna go through Kronos and what he gives. I have separated it into like three sections, primary, secondary and niche. So the primary relics is the one that you are actively farming for and then the second secondary it's like it's a good to have relic and niche is basically you can basically auto sell them if they are mediocre and they are mostly used on like specific espers and only a handful of espers use them. So the first one win everybody needs speed. You can use this uh, wind set on your DPS or on your support. War set, mostly used on your DPS. Grove and Stone Vein. Um, if you need a bit of survivability, you can use them on basically anyone. It's a two piece set. Uh, raw stats is always good. Recurve, used on, on units that utilize debuff. So, yeah, pretty good. Uh, the Frost set is pretty niche right now. Not many units use them uh, from the top of my head. Sally, Cecilia, Tyr. Yeah. If you get like a mediocre frost set, you can basically just auto sell them. And the reason why you want to farm Kronos is. So, right here, perks of farming Kronos. Um, the, the gears that you get from Kronos, they are mostly just stats. There's no prop chance or anything except for the frost one. So with just stats, it's going to allow you to const consistently farm ritual mir miracles without any RNG and all that bullshit, right? So once you get your team to work once, basically you're going to get the same, um, same runs every single time. You don't have to rely on any prop chance of uh, ocean or astralis or counter. Once you get that run going, it's going to work pretty much every single time. The same thing goes for Desolate Lens. Once you get the speed tuning right, uh, you can get EX++ basically every single time. No, no RNG involved. Um, great for farming. Yeah. And the, the biggest point right here, as you can see on the screen, <laughs> the, is getting the first turn. And this is why you want to basically permanently farm chronos and when i say permanently farm right you still want to do your three dailies on each ritual miracle and then whatever excess stamina you have you should toss it onto uh farming chronos so getting the first turn this is mostly towards pvp by getting the first turn it instantly allows you to run two types of team comps in pvp and that is speed cleave as well as the control comp you can also run a 
tank tank comp by getting the first turn and if you don't have, get the first turn you are basically locked out of speed cleaves and control comps and you're forced to use the tanky uh, tank comps why it's important to get the first turn is because when you get the first turn you basically dictate how the fight goes for example you get the first turn as a speed cleave you nuke them and you win the game or you lose the game because you couldn't nuke them or if you use a control comp you get the first turn you control them to hell and if you're using a tanky comp for example if the enemy has a faster clara right ap uh, the clara ap pushes the entire team and then the tricky strips and stuns your cleanser and then now you can't really do anything because all of your units are stuck with miss rate down and your cleanser is stunned and then when your cleanser gets out of stun the enemy uh, Gabriel with tyranny set is going to re <laughs> reapply the stun basically getting moving second you have to account for too much RNG getting the first turn you dictate how the fight goes there's no not a lot of RNG involved by getting the first turn and which is why it's such a big deal in PvP even though speed cleaves is not that meta right now it's more more so off meta speed cleave first turn advantage is still huge regardless be it in tank teams or control teams and this is the main reason why you want to basically perma farm chronos because you cannot uh, get enough speed on your windwalker there's always bigger fish than you right so yeah getting a penta roll in like a flawless wind relic is one in 1024 uh yeah you can spend like 10 years in chronos and still not have a full set of wind relic with penta rolls so you when you farm chronos you have basically an unachievable goal that's how i look at it and yeah that's why you want to farm chronos in my opinion infinitely apep primar primarily you're gonna be farming the ocean set great on non ap push supporters uh in pvp apep is mostly on mostly targeted towards pvp avatar as well a pvp rune ocean and avatar adds a bit of rng which is great uh, more rng for the enemy to face is always good for you especially in defense right fiery great for dps espers to maximize the stats aegis has kind of lost his uh usage because previously aegis is used to deter speed cliff comps and now that speed cliff speed cleave comps has basically become off meta there's not much use to to bring like an ages a full set of ages on your team right you just need like one really good ages set and you are good for the lifespan of the game because yeah you only need like one really good ages set and then panacea only used on healers and even then there's a lot better Relic set to use on healers, for example, the Ocean Waves, Astralis on like M Ahmed, uh, Windwalker, Tyranny, Frost set. Panacea is just like pretty bad. And then Nether is teetering between niche and useless. The only unit that uses ne Nether is Hide, and even then, it's seen much less use for Hide now. Some people have even change from nether to tyranny of zeus set on height or even frost set thunder set hammer of thor and in my opinion even warhammer and i mean war machine and astralis is better than nether on height nowadays and the reason is because in pvp the hp or rather the healing efficacy gets reduced way too fast for the nether to Nether, nether set to be useful so in in like medium to long fights the nether set is completely useless you're better off 
relying on your healers to heal your height rather than height healing with the nether set so yeah it's basically useless at this point um yeah the the perks of farming apep mostly targeted towards pvp you can run multiple ocean waves on your supports you, i mean you can run ocean on multiple of your supports on defense it's great you can add more rng for the enemies to face with the um, counter set for example jin yu yao on counter can stun the enemy ap push herself ahmed with tyranny plus counter is going to stun someone probably just a, a lot of rng involved in pvp which is great for your defense team and then the next one is maximizing the speed cleave team stats which it comes in in terms of the uh, fire reset by giving 20% crit rate um, the speed cleave team is the most demanding type of comp in terms of stats it needs a specific amount of speed on your dps espers it needs 100% crit rate as much attack and crit damage as possible and with the fire reset it will help alleviate some of the need on crit rate on your substats so you can focus more on speed attack or crit damage on your substats so that you can one shot more reliably that's basically apep fafnir has like two <laughs> fafnir has another tier which is useless i'll go into it a bit i think fafnir primarily you farm two you type of um relics which is the light set great on pvp adds a lot of rng especially when it comes to defense team in point war because now the enemy needs to land the strip before they can do any sort of a debuff on you the, a really good deterrent on control comps tyranny of zeus is great on basically all espers that have multi hits so like gabriel ahmed and such even height um, adds more rng to your point one defense team so the enemy is going to malt <laughs> thunder set is basically a better version of the war uh, war machine set not only does it give you more damage but it also works on all dps so defense scaling and hp scaling dps can use this uh, set and then astralis this is more niche set not many units use this set most units that use the set has two characteristics to them which is a good passive a good start of turn passive or a good s1 that's basically it so like ahmed um jin yu yao because she has a really good s1 and also a passive and jj as well because of his uh, demon mode when he procs this on demon mode then yeah he's gonna do a ton of damage and then the useless set is the immensus and the enchanted immensus resist is useless in this game because when you are using a control comp the prerequisite stat is basically basically getting to 80 percent accuracy and 80 percent accuracy completely rules out uh 100 resist because you drop it down to 20 percent yeah it's basically useless you don't really care what the enemy's resist is you just build 80 percent accuracy and then you go to speed and then whatever right that's like the prerequisite so resist right now is kind of useless in the in the game and then enchanted uh poison doesn't even work on most bosses bleed as well bleed does work but it's just a bit of damage and then this set somehow also has a chance it's not even guaranteed to extend the debuff so yeah it's useless ac across the board the perks of far farming fafnir is that you can easily climb calamity floor 200 no no stress about it you just put all of your aoe dps on tyranny of zeus and just go to town because you can stun every single one of the mobs in the calamity cal calamity island even the boss technically the next point is more rng for the enemy to deal with basically with the uh, tyranny of zeus set 
just uh, stunning. Gabriel could potentially stun the entire team twice <laughs> because she has an AoE S3 that hits three times and AoE S2 uh, that hits three times as well. And then the light set also adds a bit of RNG. As well as Astralis, if the enemy procs an Astralis on JJ for example, that could end your entire team because he could kill your support and your DPS at the same time. Yeah, I think that's basically it. That's in my opinion why you should just stick to Kronos. Just do your dailies on the uh, 3 free relic gain on Apep and Fafnir and then dump the rest onto Kronos. And then now, this is a special case for endgame PvE overachievers. You're, you're done with everything, right? You, you got EX++ on Desolate Lands. You got like 10 turns on each of the Ritual Miracle or whatever. And this is for overachieving. You want to go for the absolute best high score. in Mostly for uh, Desolate Lands. Instead of minimizing the amount of RNG that you you are going to face in PvE, um, mainly Desolate Lands, you are now going to be maximizing RNG in exchange for a higher score ceiling. So what I mean by that is now, instead of using Wind Set on your Support Espers or your DPS Espers, you will be now running Ocean Waves on Pretty much all of your support the extra chance to um, reduce your ability cooldown is going to be huge in terms of uh, increasing your score uh, a bit and you want to be running this on all of your basically all, almost all of your support aspects and even some of your dps aspect for example chloe this is a great set on chloe you know in order to get like a higher score I just score ceiling, I mean. With this, you want as much speed as possible on your ocean waves uh, set. Your farming is going to be endless on APEP. You want... Now you're looking for penta rolls on your ocean waves to get like that uh, maximum pointless score in Desolate Lands. Avatara as well, you're going to be running all of your units on Avatara, not just your DPS. And this is not because, not, not just from the extra damage that you can get from the multiplier phase by proccing avatar, but it's also because ERA has completely changed the landscape of um, Desolate Lands. ERA and above, Bersin German's Watch, if you don't know, um, each proc of avatar avatara will then... Um, proc the Bracing German's Watch AP push. By having everyone on Avatara, that's going to maximize the Bracing German's Watch AP push. And Fiery as well, if you are running a DPS that isn't using an Avatara, then you can run a Fiery to maximize the stats that they can do. It's basically an endless farm for APAP because you want as much speed on your Ocean Waves for your support to take as many turns as possible and as much speed on your avatar as well because this is the best two-piece set for pve end game achievers that just want like pointless high scores <laughs> and then also this is not really like an endless farm because you don't really need too much of it astralis as well, as well is a really good pve end game achiever relic it's used on most dps on shadow stream so for example, if you use a Ophelia as your DPS in Shadow Stream, you're going to be using Astralis instead of Thunder or War, War Machine or even Ocean Wave, right? And the reason why you want to use Astralis is because when you use Astralis, you can sacrifice speed and just go for raw damage. You just need a bit of speed as long as the DPS expert can proc a couple of Astralis, they can remove the debuff on them. It's not really a good idea to run like a lot of speed in Shadow Stream because then you'd be sacrificing too much damage. Then your DPS won't be doing too much damage. So you're gonna be using Astralis on your DPS as per for Shadow Gale, uh, so, sorry, Shadow Stream, and also Gaius. Gaius on Astralis is crack mode, man. 
he just he can proc it twice because when he goes into either his god king mode or normal mode then it resets the astralis so you can get another astralis proc and then get another turn for your support basically the only one that uses it is alice and era there's not really an endless farm to fafnir it's not really a good idea to farm endlessly farm fafnir even for pve and game achievers you will get more value from far infinitely farming apex because farming ocean waves and avatara endlessly for that juicy juicy speed is going to be more beneficial for you but uh, yeah i think that's about it let's just recap a bit infinitely farm chronos if you're not a pve end game achiever and then if you if you if you're content with your speed on your windwalker your fastest windwalker then you can go ahead and infinitely farm apep to get higher scores on your desolate lands that's it ciao